Alright guys, Dominic here for Kick Guru, and do you ever get that feeling of deja vu, kind of the sense you've been somewhere before? You might be feeling that right now, I know I certainly was when I unboxed the Gigabyte RTX 4080 Gaming OC. As you can see here, it looks almost identical to the 4090 Gaming OC that we reviewed a short few weeks ago, but of course it's a 4080 built on the AD103 GPU and today we're going to put it through its paces. To kick things off then, I am going to take us through an overview of the design of the card itself, but like I already said, if you have seen our 4090 review, feel free to use the timestamps down below and skip ahead. You will want to check out the section on the cooler and PCB design though, as that is where the key differences lie. Fundamentally though, this is a huge graphics card using a matte black shroud, though it does have a grey metal backplate. The shroud is made entirely from plastic though, and it doesn't feel particularly premium in the hand, which is a bit disappointing as we've said previously, though I guess it's not the end of the world once it's installed in your system. In terms of dimensions, it measures 343 by 150 by 75 millimeters, and it weighs in just over two kilograms. I made the point in my 4080 Founders Edition review, but it really does feel like the size of these 4080 cards is just unnecessarily large considering the power requirements. Yes, it makes sense from a manufacturing perspective, but at the end of the day, this is a card that's going to have to go in your case, so it could well limit potential customers. As it is though, Gigabyte has once more included a pretty nifty anti-sag GPU mount that actually screws into your motherboard standoffs. Though I didn't end up using this as I do actually need to use a PCIe riser card for our PCAT power testing, so it doesn't work for my use cases but it is a very good inclusion. We can also take a look at the three 110 millimeter fans that Gigabyte is using as part of this cooler, and they use the so-called unique blade fan design. As always, the central fan spins in reverse relative to the outer two, and Gigabyte claims this reduces airflow turbulence and therefore increases air pressure down onto the heatsink itself. There's a bit of RGB lighting around each of the fans too, as well as on the Gigabyte logo which is on the front of the card, and this is customizable using Gigabyte Control Center software. As for the backplate then, this is a full length metal design in a lightish to medium grey colour. We can also see a huge cutout towards the end of this backplate which simply allows airflow to pass directly through the heatsink. The dual BIOS switch is also positioned on the back with a choice of OC and silent modes. Now both do actually share the same 340 watt power limit and the 2535 MHz clock speed, with the only actual difference between these two modes being the fan speed, but we will of course test this later in the review. Speaking of power, Gigabyte does supply a triple 8 pin adapter for the 12 volt high power connector, but I actually used a native cable for all of my testing today. We can also note standard display outputs with three DisplayPort 1.4 and one HDMI 2.1. With all that said then, it's actually when disassembling the card that we can see the main differences between the 4080 Gaming OC and the 4090 Gaming OC. Starting with the PCB, while the overall design is very similar, Gigabyte has actually cut things back a bit and tweaked a few things here and there for the 4080. We can see that when looking at the power delivery as we find an 18 phase solution for the GPU VRM and a 3 phase solution for the memory. Instead of 50 amp Vichy MOSFETs though as per the 4090 Game EOC, instead here we find 50 amp Alpha and Omega AOZ5311NQI MOSFETs. We can also see that the GPU VRM is controlled by the UPI UP9512R and there's also a UP9529Q for the memory. It's also pretty cool to get our first look at the AD103 GPU, which is noticeably smaller than AD102, 
measuring 378.6 square millimeters. Gigabyte has also actually tweaked the design of the cooler, something I personally wasn't expecting. First of all, we can note that there's actually one more heat pipe for a total of 11 with the 4080 Gaming OC, so that is an extra heat pipe compared to the 4090 Gaming OC, though it's possible this is a consequence of Gigabyte removing the extra aluminium base plate that was previously used to contact the memory modules. With the 4080 though, both the GPU die and memory contact directly with the copper vapor chamber, and we can see separate base plates for the VRM. We can also note that, unfortunately, no thermal pads are used on the back plate to draw out some extra heat from the rear of the PCB. So that's going to do it for our look at the card, the overall design, and the few changes to the heatsink and PCB. It's now time to move on to testing. For this, we are of course using our regular GPU test system for 2022, and this is powered by MSI. Based on Intel's i9-12900K CPU, that is paired with the MSI MEG Z690 Unified motherboard, and we've also got 32GB of a Data XPG Lancer DDR5 memory. All testing was done using the MSI MPG321 URQD 4K monitor. Starting our testing then with the thermal performance, here we are of course testing both of the BIOS modes. As expected, the OC BIOS is the coolest running and it actually improves on the Founders Edition by about 5 degrees in terms of the GPU temperature or 4 degrees when looking at the hotspot. The Silent BIOS does run 1 degree warmer than the Founders Edition, but 63 degrees is still a very low temperature and as we shall see, it is very quiet as well. Memory thermals are also pretty ridiculous, it has to be said. Bearing in mind that this is fast GDDR6X memory running at 22.4 gigabits per second, seeing temperatures of 56 degrees for the OC BIOS and 62 degrees for the Silent BIOS really is quite staggering, and both are significant improvements over the Founders Edition. As for noise levels then, here we really have no complaints. The OC BIOS proved to be just as loud as the Founders Edition, hitting 38 decibels on our sound meter, and the Silent BIOS actually improves things further by dropping fan speed by about 200 RPM, reducing noise to 36 decibels, which really is pretty good going. I also didn't notice any coil whine during my testing. As for our noise normalized testing then, as expected, the gaming OC does do better than the Founders Edition, reducing the GPU temperature by 4 degrees. The memory temperatures also remain 10 degrees cooler, but we will test plenty more 4080s in the coming weeks to add to this chart. In terms of power draw then, we already mentioned that Gigabyte has actually increased the power limit of the GPU up to 340 watts, and that is the same for both BIOS. As it turns out, we only saw a peak reading of 315 watts in Resident Evil Village, and that is using NVIDIA PCAT, so it is still a fair bit below the rated TGP. With only a 30 MHz overclock compared to the Founders Edition as well, it's not really a surprise to see that overall clock speed behavior isn't too different. Over our 30 minute stress test in Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition, the Gaming OC OC BIOS averaged 2775 MHz, with the Silent BIOS only fractionally slower at 2763 MHz. Those are admittedly very small gains over the Founders Edition, so again, it's not a surprise to see that is reflected in our 4K game benchmarks. I tested 5 games here and didn't see the Gaming OC outperform the Founders Edition by more than 1.6%. In other words, the gaming experience is going to be exactly the same, so in my opinion, a factory overclock should not be a key factor behind which card you end up buying. Of course, we did also try our hand at manual overclocking, and it is good to see you can increase the power limit up to 400 watts for the gaming OC, when the Founders Edition could only be increased up to 355 watts. Even then though, I was only able to add another 90MHz to the GPU, 
though the GDDR6X memory overclocked like an absolute beast, as we can add another 1780 megahertz. Overall, this overclock brought the GPU's average clock speed up to 2925 megahertz, and that provided a performance uplift of anywhere between 5 to 8% in the games we retested, and that is perfectly fine, though I wouldn't say it was anything special. Power draw did also increase as expected up to 334 watts, though that is only a 6% increase. So that is it for our look at the Gigabyte RTX 4080 Gaming OC, and to be honest with you guys, I think you can probably see where this one is going. First off, from a purely objective sense, it has to be said, this is a terrific graphics card. Not only is the cooler phenomenal, giving us much better film performance than the Founders Edition, it's also great to have the silent BIOS option as well, which is lower noise, but still kept the GDDR6 memory thermals cooler than the Founders Edition. Speaking of dual BIOS as well, that is always a great feature to have in my opinion. I like the fact that you can increase the power limit as well up to 400 watts, and yeah, the card did overclock reasonably well, so I really can't have too many complaints. One thing I would say though, and yep, I did say this in my Founders Edition review, I just think these 4080s are too big. Considering the power requirements, the fact that most of the time these cards are operating at 300 watts or less, the coolers really don't need to be this big, and it's just taking up unnecessary space inside your chassis. Of course, we can't go any further without discussing value as well. Now, I said in my Founders Edition review that I already think the 4080 is a pretty bad value, and while at the time of filming I don't have a confirmed retail price for the Gigabyte Gaming OC, it is definitely going to come at a premium versus the £1,269 MSRP here in the UK. That could well be pushing prices even closer to the RTX 4090, at which point I really do wonder if you're already dropping this much cash on a graphics card, might as you well just step up to the 4090. That's only something you guys can decide for yourself, but it's personally something I would be looking at. I'd also definitely be waiting for RGNA 3 to see what AMD does next month. But like I said, in an objective sense, this is a very good graphics card. So if you do end up buying one, I am certain you will be happy with it. It's just the value proposition, in my opinion, is very tricky. Anyway, guys, that is going to do it for this review. So if you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. And as always, let me know your thoughts down below. Are you looking to buy a 4080? And would you consider the gaming OC? Do let us know your thoughts. While you're there, please do subscribe if you haven't already. And ding that notification bell so you can stay up to date with our latest videos. And why not come chat with us on our Discord server, which is linked in the description. While you're there, you can also find a link to our new merch store where I'm rocking one of our new t-shirts here with the graphics card design and finally if you're feeling particularly generous you could also consider backing us on patreon that's it for this one though guys i'm dominic for guru and i'll see you in the next video